like there's more support for it on that side. But here we go, here's the old support. Right the way here. So you can just see evidence once more of where the old viaduct actually used to run, right above us. It used to turn, there's like wheels there, so what it would have lifted up, it might have lifted something. You can just see where things would have slotted right the way in. So right after a bit of walk I had to go down Caledonia and all the way down. Got the river Starrow just onto the corner now where the Aldi is. Right around the corner got the Aldi on the corner there. River Starrow just goes right underneath the road. But what's interesting I've just noticed this. Zooming right the way in. Something going across there, some big massive steel. All the way across to where the Aldi is on the corner. And now I'm guessing by looking at the old maps used to be some sort of brickworks on the corner here as well. When I get around the corner I'll just show the, the maps of that. So right right the way over there, just at the back where the Aldi is, the back used to be called fire clay and brickworks as you can just see there. So just on the side, maybe what all that old steel is going across was once part of that industry further away over the back. I mean just uh, showing you even more there, there was a, a shaft somewhere at the back over this way somewhere on the opposite side wow there's so much more really interesting to see all this really i mean wow i mean me i don't know what that is there i mean coming all the way across is something coppice all the way across there river star would have then journeys all the way to crady then where you've got most of the interesting industry let's journey further on we've got more to cover so right Still see the River Star journey in further down on this way. But I've noticed something on the very last ever visit I've come down. I'm not sure if you can be able to see them, but there's so many old cars, classic cars all in the edge. I'm gonna check out this if I can see them. But yeah, right around the edge is a load of old cars from some from the olden days, which is really quite interesting, overgrown, covered over the back. But there is one, just right the way there, completely overgrown. That's crazy, a lot of abandoned cars. That's right the way on the edge, left to rot. Noticed that the very last time I ever come down. Really crazy.
yeah, down the back uh, you've got the mouse suite, you've got Mushroom Green. Mushroom Green's an interesting place because you can go there, there is actually a chain shop which is open every Sunday of a month at a certain time of the year. But I've never got a chance to do that one in Mushroom Green. But you imagine the uh, Crowley dates back old with chain making, they even had chain shops in people's back gardens, even the uh, ladies also made chain. So back in the days they had to do what they had to do to bring the money in. And chain making was a very prosperous business back in those days. I'll tell you more when I get further down and uh, bits of information and also some old video footage of chain making. But wow, well, the weather is just getting so warm, I was getting further down. Put the wrong stuff on because it was so freezing to come out this morning by Stamba Mill Viaduct. But right, not too far, let's just keep journeying on. So right, I've just noticed this coming down, it did uh, attract my eyes a little bit, a ve another very old bridge. I noticed there's some really old wood sticking right the way out with nails. Let me just check right the way down any second, might be able to see it right the way there, check out that. Even more old bits of uh, nails and stuff, so when was this actually constructed, it's got to be really old. Because you can see all the wood supports, what I'm actually coming all the way out and falling off. That is really so cool. You see, things are hiding, but you've got to take detail to really notice it. What's it like on this side? Yeah, you can just see right the way there, look. That is really quite cool. And uh, <laughs> there's actually a golf ball sticking on top of that one. Right on that corner there. Wow. So right, if you decide to do this walk, it does come to an end there. You've got to get back on this road, Stara Hill, I believe it is, all the way up. So I'm going to take that road and see where it goes. But if you look on the corner there, you can just see the angle from where you come from. It's coming straight up this way. So if it does take us to the section where it joins back onto the Stara, where Crowley forges and you've got the mouse suite just right around the corner. But another steep hill, you can see right the way here. So right, this Stower Hill Road, what I'm coming down, it's really quite interesting. Just further up, you might be able to see like a, a little white house in a minute, right around the distance, just at the back over there. I will show you when I get there. But actually, it says here that it used to be a brewery. So I'll just put a screenshot on there for you now. So if we go and show you where that brewery was, I'll get to the end of the road. Right the way there, that house used to be the, the brewery, right the right at the back in the very very old days so you see it's interesting to see what's there you find quite a lot of old industry and you see a brewery on the back imagine where all these houses was years ago there's probably old industry all here so here we are I've made it back onto the river stower so stower is actually all the way down that corner so i've come all the way from that road then back down and you've got the mouse suite which is on the the far back corner so if we cross over we've actually got the crowded forge right the way at the back so here we are, this is actually believed where somewhere back here where Crady Forge was actually situated. We just journey right the way down. There's an information board here, I don't know how dirty it is to show you because I think it's a bit filthy on it. But somewhere here, you can see all the old brick wall. I'll show you that a bit better in a little bit. But here we are, there's lots of information on it. I'll just uh, cover that back a bit. I might be able to show you a little bit of it with the Stower Valley. So there, nice walk this. Got a map there, so to say, Methodist Church, Wagon and Horses. You've got the Mouse Week, which leads all the way back up to Mushroom Green, what I was on about. So there, there's actually a, a photo, but it's a shame it is really uh, 
got a bit funny coloured. You see Crowley Forge, about 1903 apparently that is. And there's something else there, the Mouse Sweet Brook. So if I just pan around just to tell you about this one. So if I tell you a bit of information, Crowley Forge was a water power forge producing iron, which was slit and worked into rods for making chains and nails. It is first recorded in 1610, but could have existed for some time before this. From about 1619 to about 1630, Crowley Forge was managed by Dud Dudley, who claimed to have smelted iron ore using coal, instead of using the usual charcoal. This occurred in about 1620, almost 90 years before it was achieved by Abraham Darby at Colbert Dale in Shropshire. Well, quite interesting there. So the original Crowley Forge, later known as the Lower Forge, was situated on the south bank of the River Stour. It was associated with an iron smelting furnace on the north bank, whose bellows were driven by water from the new pool. The pool uh, was north of what is now the Forge Lane. The furnace went out of use by 1792, and the new forge, the Upper Forge, was built on the Mousewheat Brook in 1775. You've got the Mousewheat Brook, which is further on. If you walk up there, it will bring you at the back end of Mushroom Green. Like I mentioned, you've got the, the chain shop, which you can go visit today on a certain Sunday, which is quite interesting. Imagine back in those days, nails and chains were made quite a lot in this area, in the back gardens and also from industry on the surrounding areas. So by the middle of the 19th century, a small settlement had developed, including the Methodist Chapel and Wagon and Horses Pub formerly the Ammer Inn, referring to the Ammers using the forges. Samuel Evers and the sons were tenants of the forges at the time, producing rolled and slit iron and rods. A new colliery at Homer Hill provided fuel, water powered was later replaced by steam, and new pool was drained in 1878. More interesting information there, it's really quite interesting. The main road from Crowley Heath to Quarry Bank originally ran through Crowley Forge on the north bank of the Stour. It had been diverted along what is now Forge Lane when the railway was constructed in 1863. Crowley Forge was taken over by Guest & Co, a local firm of nail rod manufacturers, about 1896, but closed December 1906, making 200 workers redundant. Both forges were developed in May 1907. So there we go, quite a lot of interesting information about Crowley Forge. You can just see how far it really does date back when it closed. Bits and pieces of information. But you can imagine nails and chains were made in this area, in gardens, in surrounding areas, within the factories like I mentioned. But what's interesting is a little bit of video for you now about chains. They've been making chain by hand in the Cradley Heath area since the early 1800s. A lot of small size chain and shackles was made for chain companies by outworkers, whole families who made chain at home. They'd make chain in a workshop at the bottom of the garden or at the back of the house. They'd buy in the iron and coke from a chain company and sell the finished chain back to them at the end of the week. Over the years, chain making, along with the anchor business, grew into a prosperous industry, drawing on the skills and brawn of the local men till the black country character became known for what he was. Hard working, hard drinking, hard living. Most chainsmiths learnt the trade through family connections. The know-how was handed down generation to generation. As a lad, he'd go to work with his father, getting the knack of handling tools, learning the right heat of the fire for bending and welding wrought iron links. It was a hard life for a lad, taking at least seven or eight years before he could call himself a chainsmith. Incidentally, they'd only pay him for the links he'd shot, and then only if up to scratch. Wrought iron bar is cropped to length. The straight link, as it is then called, is heated in the breeze fire. Using his bending tongs, he puts the link into the bender and bends it U-shaped. After re-firing, using his holders, he wraps the bent link round the point of the vicon. Then with his hammer, he welds the link. 
to finish off the weld, he uses the Tommy. So there is quite a lot of information on Crowley Heath. I'll drop a drop all of this in the description. So if you want to read through it after this video, then feel free to. It tells you a lot about information from the industry to mining, about the mining on the South Staffordshire coal field. It's really quite interesting. There's lots of information. There's too much to tell you because I'll be here for about over a good hour. Wow, this is so much from transport to education. To sports it's, there's just so much more on to this so drop the link in you'll read that go and check it out really interesting i believe there used to be other industry at the back here something called triton works chain and anchor and there also used to be enamelin um bear one second enamelin and galvanizing works which is also on the far back corner but if we just journey down you can just see remains of the the forge itself so I believe you can just see old brick from when the forge was actually there, just on that corner. And then there is some stuff right the way here on this corner. So you can just see old brickwork right the way there on the corner. And then also right the way there. But if we journey down, there's also something else really interesting. You can just see right here, even more, an old post from the old days. It's been sat here to rot. You see something sticking right the way out there and there. That is really heavy and old, that is, inside there. Wow. Imagine how many years this has been there for when that forge even closed. And on the corner there once more. So there we go. Really piece of interesting information. So I'm really glad to come and show you this today. And this was the whole put to come and show you and tell you about the old industry. What was here in the, along the River Stower. So right, there we go. I think it's going to be a nice walk now all the way to the Corngreave. So we just got to keep going on and then we should come out to some more little areas then up to the Corngreave. So I will tell you about Corngreave's Hall. I will show you the River Stour down there and I'll show you some old maps when they get down by the gun barrel in Alza. I mean, show you what was there. Methodist Church. There's quite a lot of interesting stuff on the Horn Colliery, the tramway that went across. So back in those days, mining along the River Stour, taking stuff across was prosperous but journeying down there's even more things you can just see here more old brick wall so if I just pan around check out that more old brick wall on this corner all the way around mm, it's interesting so could it be from old industry that there was some works up there in the old days so it's thinking which way to go yeah carry back up this way so right it's going to bring us back out to the the road at the bottom so i think you can't walk down that way i believe he's uh, coming back to the road so whether there is another way to get back onto the river stour there's probably something further away over the back so i think what i'm going to do is walk through cradley come down i'm going to come all the way to the corn greens that way it's not it's, a, it's only a short walk it doesn't really take too too long I think it's the best way to get there because I don't think there is too much down if there was the river style water that way now until you get to the Corn Greaves. But let's keep journeying on and I'll meet you at Corn Greaves Hall. So right, something really interesting that I've wanted to show you for quite a while is this into Cradley. It's actually called the Majestics. It actually used to be an old fashioned cinema. Really old, you can just see all the style right at the way at the top. If I zoom in to see it, See all the star right the way up there, all the old pipe work right the way at the top, all the way there. But it's quite cool to see all see that is even still remaining from the old days. If many of you remember the Majestics, there is a video on YouTube actually uh, show you what that was back in the days. I've actually seen it. But you see all the old shops have all gone derelict, got an adult shop on the corner, PC shop not used anymore. So I wonder what the future is for this, what they're going to do with it, whether they're going to restore it to something. But yeah, it used to be an old fashioned cinema. I did see something on the exploration website of old reels upstairs, which is really quite cool. 
So I thought I might show you that one, that's actually majestic, some crazy. So right, here we go, we're back onto the River Stour. So I think now this will all go to the Corn Greaves now, and all the way down to the back where I need to get to. You see, there's another bridge just right away there, coming out of Cradley, just onto the corner. So I think we might go on the, the road on the left to go see what's down there. I think it takes us onto a bit of an area. And some steps where I'll go back up to the top and then we can go down to there. So here we go, back on the Stower Valley Walk. This is actually called Lodge Forge, onto the corner. It's got an information sign here, 1895 to 1907. 28 goals in 23 games for England. Steve Bloomer, king of goal scorers of uh, Derby County, Middlesbrough and England. That's quite cool, that is. So here we are, we've made it to the Corn Greaves. Long walk. Well, uh, only around the corner now is the Corn Greaves Hall. So, right here's Corn Greaves Hall. Here's the gates where you go right the way in. Let me blow a photo up for you so you can see Corn Greaves Hall. There's a bit of history. It does actually say Corn Greaves Hall was built around 1795 by Iron Master James Atwood, uncle of Thomas Atwood, who was Birmingham's first MP. The law is said to be built on the site of Corngreaves Castle, which may explain the castle type appearance of this grey two listed building. Is that actually why it's got like a, a castellated like front entrance just right away at the front? So the Horn and the Estate was sold by James's son, John, to the British Iron Company, following liquidation of the company in 1893, which then had become the new British Iron Company. It was acquired by the Garrett family, who were one of the creditors. Oh wow, didn't know that. The hall later became property of the Fellows family, who later sold it to the Rowley Regis Borough Council. The Garrett family actually owned the Horn Colliery right at the top. I'll tell you about Horn Colliery one more time in a minute, about the tramway that used to come across the River Stower. You can just see uh, Corn Greaves l &R go all the way around. So it is a nice walk, this one I've done this many times and it's one of my favourite uh, walks, this River Stower section. And I down and I've got nothing to do and I thought, you know, where can I go for a walk? I'll come down this way. And every time I've been down, I've never ever noticed the wall until going back a few months back and I've done more research about it and the old maps. But you can just see the River Stower coming all the way down, brick walls onto the corner. But where the tramway used to run, I've actually found evidence of it on the other side. So it might have been a bit bigger than usual, but I think it's actually this one coming up very soon. So here we are, got the River Stower. That is Horn Colliery. 
tramway what used to come all the way across and go to the other side picture on for you now so you can actually see the map of the tramway actually coming over the stour bit of brick wall there so i can imagine it would have been a bit more bigger than it usually would i'm guessing it is definitely this one because you can tell how high up it really is from the corner there and if we come over the other corner this is how i know it was definitely the tramway if we just go around this corner i did show you this a couple of times before i thought i might just show you one more time in this video but right the way through here you can just see a lot of these plants on the floor don't want to tread on them but right the way there is the wall for the other side of the tramway so it would have gone all the way up bent all the way around and there would have been a linking from timber tree colliery map on for you now so you can see that and all the way back down so you can just see once more a lot of industry using the river style to transport goods across over a tramway really interesting this area was actually known for various coal mines was Whitley colliery horn colliery timber tree colliery i think there was a colliery where bath meadow is i'm not too sure there possibly could have been many many years ago but yeah just further down but i'll tell you what i'm just i'm just absolutely shattered now the how far i've really come from stamber mill to get here it's really crazy but i've just noticed one thing that i do want to show you there is two brick walls so which one was it the tramway because you've got that one down there what looks big and it's evidence of the other side but then you've got this one was there more than one tramway was it just one tramway but you can just see right here there's actually another wall with all brick that's coming out the ground so could it have possibly been that the tramway was this one here there's one there sticking right the way out so could it have been that one maybe well, i guess the ground is just too high up for it to even be that I really don't know but it looks more like it could have been the one down the bottom that is so cool that is but yeah i'm going to show you a map now of the where the methodist chapel actually used to be by the gun barrel i'm not walking down there because i've I just completely had enough now <laughs> it's been an absolutely fantastic walk i've really enjoyed it it's been absolutely brilliant to come this far but yeah i just need a rest but the way i'm going back home now is across the the back end and up to the home park and up but my camera battery is about to die any moment as well but yeah so you've just seen the map there so you can just see the methodist church i mean it's amazing to see what there was one there but there isn't now there used to be a methodist church as well further over the back on the bell vale section and that vanished in the early 1900s but yeah thank you very much for watching the video if you've got this far it's been an interesting trip going to do some more like this uh, walks find different places through the black country taking us across various places where there was lots of industry but yeah see you soon the middens outdoors out and enjoy the rest of the cinematics that i've got for you with this river stour section beautiful walk and definitely go and do this the river stour walk it's really great i've enjoyed it but tell you what get some energy because it is a big walk